All right, thanks for watching, and today I will prove the Bolzano Weierstrass theorem. I recently found out his check um, that simply says every bounded sequence in R must have a convergent subsequence. So if Xn is a bounded sequence, in R, then Xn must have a convergent subsequence. Okay. And um, what does bounded mean? It means that Xn is less than or equal to m for some m and all n. And this means Xn is between minus n m and m, but in particular this means that xn is in the interval minus m comma m. And in fact, I want to show something slightly more general, so claim if xn is a bounded sequence, or in fact is a sequence, in the closed interval a comma b, then xn has a convergent subsequence. Okay. Now, how do we show this? So there's a nice proof I found in the in Pugue's analysis book. So consider the following. And by the way, this is sometimes called a sequentially compact. So the interval a comma v, the closed one, is sequentially compact. So proof let xn be a sequence in a comma b and consider the following set. So consider the set C, which is the set of points x in AB, such that xn is less than x um, all, only finitely often. Let me think, yeah, only finitely often. And let me explain this with a little picture. So, Consider a sequence like that. So this is a sequence Xn, and again, it's bounded between A and B. So it's between A and B. Now notice, if you choose X like this, then the problem is Xn is less than x for a lot of values. In fact, infinitely many values, and it's not true that xn is less than x finitely many often. Also, same thing here. There are like infinitely many values for which xn is less than x. So I think this is xn. But then let's continue. Well, here it's actually better. So notice for this x, there are only finitely many values xn that is less than x. So this x is in C, this x is not in C, this x is not in C, and similarly for this x, it's also in C. So there's some barrier where we go between not being in C and being in C. It's almost, if you like, like a lower bound for your sequence, except we're allowing finitely many values to be less than the lower bound. All right, now here's a nice thing. Well, first of all, notice, well, A is in C because no values of Xn are less than X. So zero values, which is finitely many values of Xn are less than X. So we get A is in C. Notice, A is in C, so in particular C is non-zero, uh, sorry, non-empty, and also, well, C is a set of X in A, B, such that this is true, so in fact, B is the upper bound uh, of C, so C is bounded above.
phi b. So bam, by the least upper bound property, uh, there is a suprema. So by lub property, um, c has a, uh, a least upper bound. So supremum of c. C, which would denote by little c, exists. And little c, roughly, it's kind of here. Because afterwards, there are like infinitely many values of xn uh, that are um, less than x. And I'm claiming that there is a subsequence of xn that converges to c. And by the way, C, it's in yeah, A comma B, doesn't matter. Um, um, so claim, there is a subsequence of XM that converges, uh, that converges to C. And then what would be done? There is a subsequence of U sequence uh, that is convergent, and you see Xn is between A and B, so the limit also is between A and B. So we're good. And well, suppose not. Suppose not. What would that mean? It means that uh, there is some epsilon. such that eventually that uh, uh, for some n, capital N, uh, there is, uh, for some capital N, if N is bigger than capital N, then your sequence is outside the good region, X minus epsilon, if you want C minus epsilon, and C plus epsilon. Let me illustrate this. So this is C, and I'm claiming that if there's, this is not true, if there's no subsequence that converges to C, it means that the sequence itself is outside of the good region C minus epsilon and C plus epsilon. Okay, so eventually, so there is some capital N, such that the sequence Xn is outside of the good region. So initially it might be, but then afterwards there's sort of this repelling force that tells you, you go outside. And why is that true? Well, suppose not. So again, suppose not, suppose not. So why if for all epsilon okay, and all n, there is, is n bigger than capital N such that xn minus x, xn minus c is less than epsilon, well then we can actually construct a convergent subsequence like that because, um, look, for instance, let's take epsilon equals one, then we know after some, let's say capital N1, we know, and again, this is for some, eh? yeah. uh, we know that there's at least one value of your sequence that's in the good region. So epsilon minus one, and yeah, um, if you want to know, uh, C minus one and C plus one, then we know there's at least one value, let's say Xn1, in the good region, but then you can just continue. So then let's take epsilon equals one half. So C minus one half and C plus one half. Then we know, let's say for this N1, we know that there's another N2 that is in this better region. So Xn2 is in that better region. 
And then you can continue. You can take C minus one third and C plus one third, C minus one quarter, C plus one quarter, and eventually you get that the sequence X and K actually must converge to a C. So we would eventually get a subsequence that converges, right? you know, which is, uh, I can't, you know, which we did not assume. Now, why is that a contradiction? Because, so what do we know? So we know that uh, there is an epsilon okay, uh, such that eventually you're outside of your good region. So C minus epsilon and C plus epsilon First of all, before n, there are only finitely many values. So let's just ignore them. So we don't really care that much about finitely many values. But notice c minus epsilon is less than c, which is the supremum of x, such that xn is less than x for all, uh, for finitely many n. Now, because c minus epsilon is less than c, what we know, there is some x such that xn minus x for finitely many n. But then there's kind of a contradiction because, so we know just for finitely many n, uh, xn is less than x, but there's nothing between x and c plus epsilon. So in fact, for finitely many n, we have xn is less than c plus epsilon for finitely many n. But again, c is the supremum. So actually here we have an upper bound. So in fact, by supremum, c plus epsilon is less than or equal to c. But that's a contradiction. Okay. And therefore, what we get to so a contradiction with the assumption that there is no subsequence uh, that converges, and therefore we get a subsequence that converges. All right, thank you very much.